Focus on Britain tonight looks at some of the other complaints and ills of the 15 million of us who work in offices, like repetitive strain injury, now the commonest cause of absenteeism in the Western world. Why does office work make people sick, and what's being done to make things better? Norman Rees investigates. There are an estimated 6 million VDU users in Britain, and as from this year, employers have a legal responsibility to ensure they have proper lighting, seating, keyboards and screens. This probably could go back a, back a touch. The new rules bring us into line with six different European community directives on health and safety in the workplace. It's complicated and it's costly. We've got two basic types of um, muscles. But that could be money well spent. Repetitive strain injury is now the single most common cause of occupation-related absenteeism in the Western world. So some companies employ specialists to educate workers on ways to avoid RSI. Experts say the root cause is not always physical. Pressure and stress will increase muscle tension. Muscle tension will increase that static loading on the muscles and therefore you get more aches, more pains, and unless you deal with them and eliminate the sort of stressful environment, you can then lead on to having more nerve-related problems after that. This worry about the welfare of white-collar workers not shared by the city's hard hats. They got it too easy anyway. And do some of this for half an hour, then they'll know all about it. I think RSI is a very serious condition. It must not be underestimated, but it must be put in the context of all the other harms that can be caused from workplace activities. Meanwhile, health inspectors are out making sure EC directives and the law are obeyed to the letter. Norman Rees, News at 10, Central London. The Ministry of Defence is probably the largest user of computer systems in the United Kingdom. Around a quarter of a million people's jobs now involve the use of information technology. In the future, there is likely to be an even greater increase in the number of jobs which involve the use of visual display equipment or VDUs. Although VDUs have brought many benefits, they have also brought significant changes to the way in which work is carried out. Many users have had to learn to use a keyboard and screen for the first time. Even trained typists have had to learn new skills to make the most of this new technology. Older ways of conducting office work often involved a variety of activities, such as filing, collating information, or drafting documents in longhand to be typed by someone else. Now many of these activities can be conducted from a single VDU workstation. Whilst this has increased the efficiency of office work, it also means that many users are now involved in long periods of work, sitting still at their desks. Some people have expressed concern that the intense use of VDUs over long periods may result in users experiencing disorders, including headaches and eyesight problems, physical aches and pains, and problems associated with excessive stress. Whilst it is now accepted that some of these effects undoubtedly do exist, they are not an inevitable consequence of working with VDUs and can, with care, be avoided. The Health and Safety Executive have encouraged employers to manage these risks by introducing regulations covering work with VDUs. These regulations stress the importance of ergonomics in the design and use of visual display equipment. Ergonomics is concerned with ensuring that equipment and working environments are designed and used so that there is as little discomfort or stress as possible to the human user. For many years, the principles of ergonomics have been applied to consumer items like hi-fi and cars to make them more comfortable and easy to use, and to military equipment in order to maximize the efficiency and safety of the operator. More recently, ergonomics has been applied in the same way to the design and use of offices and office equipment. Here we aim to show you how to make IT work for you by explaining the problems you may experience and how best to avoid them. The most common problems fall into three categories. Musculoskeletal, eyesight and stress. 
When using a keyboard or mouse, it is the fingers which carry out most of the work. Like any other part of the body, the muscles and tendons which power the fingers are prone to fatigue and injury. Stiffness, pain or change in sensation in the hand may be signs that there is a problem. You should try to keep your hands and forearms as straight as possible, with your wrists held in a neutral position, that is, neither bent up, down, or to one side. To achieve this, you may have to adjust your seat up or down so that your shoulders are relaxed and your elbows are roughly level with the keyboard. Keep your keying action as light as possible. Modern keyboards need a minimum of force to operate the keys and you should try to avoid excessive force or stabbing actions. If your hands or forearms begin to tire or ache, try stretching and rotating your arms and wrists gently and flexing your fingers for a few seconds. Adjust the back of your chair to support you comfortably in an upright position. You should be able to relax into your chair and feel the back support particularly in the lower or lumbar region of the back, where the spine should be supported in a gentle inwards curve. If after adjusting your seat height, you find that your feet are suspended above the floor, or you feel pressure on your thighs from the front of your chair, then use a footrest to relieve the pressure. The neck and shoulder muscles can tire easily and begin to ache, especially if they're held in an awkward position for any length of time. You should try to work with your head and neck held so that they are not twisted to one side or slump forwards. Ideally, you should position the items you look at most often directly in front of your body. If you are looking mostly at the screen, then you should place it so that it is in line with you and with the keyboard and at a level where you are looking ahead and slightly downwards. A good rule of thumb is that the top of the screen should be level with your eyes and at a distance at which you can clearly see the image on the screen. If you are a touch typist and rarely look at the screen, then place the source document directly in front of you and at the same height as the monitor, which you should place to one side of the document. Hello? No, you've got the wrong number. Organise your workspace so that the most frequently used items, such as telephones or notepads, are within easy reach. Remember that your workspace is where you spend a large part of your life. Above all, don't tire yourself unnecessarily. Try to limit any unnecessary repetitive movements by rethinking the way in which your workspace and your activities are linked. It's worth the time and trouble to get it right. In recent years there has been some concern that working with VDUs can lead to eye injuries and a deterioration in eyesight. This has since been proved to be untrue. However, some people do experience problems with their vision during and after periods of VDU use. Staring at one point, such as the screen, for extended periods will fatigue the muscles of the eyes. You may find that at the end of the day you have difficulty focusing on long distances. A simple solution to this problem is to change your viewing distance regularly. Make a conscious effort to look away from the screen for a moment every five minutes or so. Other users experience irritation of the eyes such as dryness, itching or redness. The likely cause of these conditions is the dry, dusty, moving air which is produced and circulated by VDU equipment. The effect of this can be to dry out the sensitive membranes on the surface of the eye. Introducing plants into the office is one natural means of rehumidifying the air in your office. Or you can control the problem by opening a window or by having your air conditioning system adjusted. Some people blink very little when they are concentrating on their screens. This can worsen the problem of dry eyes. Take care to blink regularly to allow your eyes to lubricate themselves. The contrast and brightness controls on your screen work in the same way as they do on a television. You should adjust them so that you can clearly see the image on the screen, brighter and with more contrast under bright lighting conditions and less bright in dimmer offices. It is possible to tire the eyes more by viewing the screen against a bright background or with a bright reflection showing on the screen. Be careful not to adopt awkward postures in an attempt to remedy this. 
you should make sure that sources of light, such as windows or lamps, are suitably shielded from direct view. If you have difficulty seeing the screen clearly or suffer from headaches during the course of your work, then you should consider having your vision checked. As a VDU user, you may be entitled to a free eye and eyesight examination. You may also be eligible for reimbursement for any corrective spectacles which an optometrist thinks necessary for your VDU work. The word stress is used freely to describe situations ranging from being very busy to a state of blind panic. There are many people who claim that they work better under stress. Uh, stop, stop that. I need this done. I've got a meeting at, at 11.30, so can you please get this done immediately? Just break everything off there. I need all this done. Everything. Excessive stress can cause people to underperform in their jobs, and there is increasing concern that the physical effects of stress, changes to posture and muscular tension, may affect some people's susceptibility to hand and arm injuries. To prevent excessive stress affecting your ability to work, you should try, wherever possible, to even out your working day so that unnecessary peaks and troughs are eliminated. It is important that you vary your activities from time to time to get yourself away from screen-based tasks. The rest breaks are important in reducing the cumulative build-up of work-related stress. For some people, it will not be possible to control their work in this way. In that case, you should identify a supervisor or manager with whom you can discuss your work flow. Anxiety and stress can also be felt by people who are finding it difficult to cope with their VDU work. If you feel that you need help to get the most out of your VDU, then ask your supervisor to provide you with training or refresher training. Remember, none of the problems we have described are inevitable consequences of working with VDUs. However, it is important to protect yourself before any warning signs develop into anything more serious which may harm you or affect your ability to carry out your work properly. If you feel that you have a problem, then talk to your supervisor, line manager or health and safety risk assessor about your need to work more safely. For some people, the techniques we have described may not apply entirely. In that case, you may require additional consideration to work safely. Ergonomics is playing an increasingly important role in ensuring that technology is used effectively as well as safely. Many large organisations have found that people work more productively in an environment that allows them to work comfortably. Leading edge research indicates that office efficiency may be improved by as much as 25% by properly considering the physical and mental requirements of human beings at work. DGICS, in conjunction with MOD health and safety authorities, have produced a range of posters, booklets and educational material to promote the concept of ergonomics within the department. All DGICS catalogue items are now selected using an ergonomic as well as functional perspective. There is a two-day training course available if you need more in-depth information and further help is available from the ergonomics consultancies in the catalogue. You should take seriously the health issues associated with your work. Take the time to think about how your office, your desk and chair and your personal workspace are laid out. By following the measures we have described, you will find yourself working more safely and comfortably. And remember, ergonomics is here to make IT work for you.